Welcome to the Drive to School podcast. I'm still Pastor Gooden. I'm a content executive at Higher Things. And joining me today is Ashley Sheldon. Ashley is a, a mental health professional, all licensed and whatnot to help us uh, through some, well, my crazy. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I am tired, but we're going to fake some energy and uh, and carry through. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier because I want to talk to you today about anxiety. Um, it, it's one of those things that uh, we even got in the scriptures where it, it's it's separate from fear there. Um, but I think everybody actually already kind of had their head around anxiety. It's it's not so hard to find right now. Actually, what's what's the technical term? Like, how do you define anxiety? How do I know officially that I have it? Yeah. I mean, like, I think that anxiety is, is kind of a buzzword these days, like both anxiety and depression are kind of buzzwords. Um, and I mean, there's a difference between, you know, feeling anxious, feeling nervous, um, feeling, you know, a little bit worried and stressed about something versus like a clinical diagnosis of anxiety. Right. Um, and really the, the big difference is, um, you know, when we talk about a clinical definition or a diagnosis or whatever you want to call it, um, is that, you know, there's criteria, right? You have to meet so many of the criteria in a certain amount of time. Um, and really like the biggest thing with a diagnosable anxiety is really unexplained anxiety, right? Is that it's, it's not due to something. It's not caused by something. It's not, um, it doesn't match up with, something to be anxious about. Right. Um, so it really just kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, I'm sure everybody can recognize that like anxious anxiety feels like something, right. We can feel anxiety in our body. A lot of people feel it, you know, they'll, they'll get red, they'll, um, feel it in their heart. They'll feel it in their body. They'll get tense. Um, but really, yeah, the, the biggest thing when it comes to a diagnosis of anxiety, anxiety disorder is that unexplained anxiety, right. It comes randomly. It doesn't seem to have a rhyme or reason to it. And so it's a lot harder to just be like, okay, well, calm down, right? Just like relax, just like meditate, like do some yoga, right? Like, because there's not um, an organic cause to it, right? That we can necessarily treat in the moment. It's it's unexplained. Right. So if there's a root cause, like I can say, um, I am sure I'm going to fail this test because I did not study. Mm-hmm. Uh, the root cause is the test. And so I have, I have something that will make me anxious, yeah. but after the test is over, the anxiety should go away. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's, it's diagnosed anxiety, I'm just always convinced the world's about to end. Um, and it doesn't actually match up with what's actually happening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the biggest thing. And I know that we've talked a lot about this in our, in our previous conversations about mental health stuff is yeah, the what's happening and what we're, and what we're feeling don't match up. Right. And what our beliefs are, right. Like I know I have no reason to be anxious, going to work because I've been working here for five years and everything's the same and nothing is different. Right. But like now it's like, I can't get out of bed. Right. I can't get out of the house. I can't meet with people. Um, and I think that's become even more prevalent in the last two years, right? Like we're out of practice a little bit, um, with being around people and being in social situations. And so at least for me, I've seen an increase in people, um, experiencing anxiety, right. Both explained and kind of unexplained. Right. Even just sort of being left alone with yourself for too long, at least with me, that's a that's a great thing to sort of spool up my wouldn't it all fall apart if uh, questions that won't seem to go away. It, it's in the scriptures, too. Um, and it's interesting, like there are places where Jesus says, do not be afraid. But there's also a place where he says, don't be anxious. And I think these might actually be different things. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, it's one of those places where uh, when Jesus says, don't be anxious, we want to be sure that we're not sort of assuming that that means there must be a, an off switch, that if I just believe enough, I, I won't have anxiety or, or Jesus is mad at me for having anxiety because anxiety is a sin. Uh, it, it's different here than it is all of the other places. So there are places where Jesus addresses sin and he'll say, don't do this. Instead, do this. It's, it's your catechism, like all the way through. So if we're going with stealing stuff, because stealing is bad. Uh, I know that we should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but instead help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. But when it comes to anxiety, Jesus doesn't follow it up with instead do this. He instead talks about what he's doing, not about what you should do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually really, really important. He, he says, do not be anxious. And then instead of instead think about this or just calm down. He says, look, I'm taking care of birds. 
if I can take care of birds, I'll take care of you. I love you even more. Look, I will carry this world that should be falling apart through into the resurrection. And you are the already resurrected because you're baptized. You are already drowned, already risen, already washed clean. And so I want you to focus on me. The, the anxiety doesn't just sort of shut your brain. They're, they're, it won't. You can't shut your brain off. Mm. But since you can't shut your brain off, Jesus says, think about the promises of God. Think about the gospel. Um, how do we start to address anxiety clinically then? Yeah, I mean, really the first step to addressing anything is is being mindful of and tracking it, right? Um, and really kind of looking at like, hey, when does this happen, right? So even if it's not explained, even if it's like, you know, I experienced this, right? A lot of people will talk about waking up with anxiety. It's like, I haven't even had a chance to like think about anything yet, right? Like I woke up and I felt anxious. Um, and on the other hand, a lot of people will um, feel a lot of anxiety before they go to bed, right? It's like, okay, now that I'm laying down, like you said, like I'm alone with my thoughts. Like I, I don't want to do this, right? I don't want to be here alone with my thoughts. And like, my thoughts are not a good place to be sometimes. Um, and so really what I encourage people to do is like the biggest thing is like to track it, right? Recognize like, hey, when do I feel the most anxious? <laughs> whether it's, whether there's a reason or not, whether it seems explained or not, right? Like, when do I feel it? And so that's when we can start kind of saying, okay, well, that's the instead, right? It's like, okay, I feel anxious. This is when I am experiencing this. Um, a lot of kind of tips and tricks for anxiety do have, um, a lot of somatic elements to them. So they're like body related, right? Pretty much everything that we feel emotionally is somehow related to us physically. Um, and so there's some, there's some cool things that I encourage people to do um, in terms of anxiety. One of the biggest ones is um, like hot or cold. Um, it kind of shocks the system a little bit. Um, you can take like an ice pack, put it on, it's called your vagus nerve, um, just like right in the middle of your chest. And you can, um, it just like, it literally like your body's like, whoa, it's cold. Um, and so like your you don't have time to overthink, right? Your body doesn't have the ability and your mind doesn't have the ability to like say, okay, now what are we worried about? What if this happens? What if this doesn't, doesn't happen? Right. It's like, no, 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 I'm cold. Right. Like, so it kind of shocks the system a little bit. Um, another helpful thing is like sour candy, like warheads, um, or anything even more sour than that is it does the same thing. It kind of tricks our nervous system and our parasympathetic nervous system to say, well, this is really, really sour. I don't remember what I was just stressed about. Right. I don't remember what I was just worried about. So some of it is like doing those things and those kind of replacements, right. To like trick ourselves and like give ourselves a chance to breathe, right. Give ourselves a chance to say, I'm okay in this moment, because when we're overthinking and we're just continuing to like worry about the things that we're worried about, um, we just spiral. Right. And a lot of people say depression or depressive thoughts, are thinking about the past too much, thinking about what we should have done or what we shouldn't have done or trauma or whatever. And anxiety is worrying about the future and things that haven't even happened yet. Um, and, and that's, you know, logically a big waste of time, but a lot of people, including myself, experience that, right? Like worrying about things that probably won't even happen. But what yeah. if? Um, so spiritually then, uh, one of the things that we do, and, and it's a, another physical thing, is we remind ourselves of the baptism. We, we make the sign of the cross. And it's, it's, again, that sort of physical reminder that there's more going on here than what you're worried about. Uh, and one of the things I, I really recommend is, is praying the litany. Um, it, it's, it's sort of a meditative walk through God's promises. And it's, if you're in our hymnal, it's page 288. It, it, it's repetitive, but at the same time, it, it's a constant cry and answer. Here are the things that I'm scared about. Lord, have mercy. He does. And as we can't stop our brain from moving or, or fixating on just these things, it pulls us across the whole spectrum of God's counsel, the, the whole spectrum of God's promises. And it gives us something constant to think about when we would rather think about how I'm pretty sure everything's about to fall apart. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to do it next time with a warhead and uh, see how that goes. too. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, if you can't break out of it yourself recognize that that's a normal thing like we're, we're not actually supposed to doctor ourselves we're not actually supposed to heal ourselves we we receive it from another so another thing you could do if you should have a good pastor who will when you're anxious go and actually give you god's promises and not just yell at you that that's how it's supposed to work mm -hmm. um but where else can we start to go yeah i mean um obviously i gotta plug some therapy um you know whether it's a professional whether it's you know 
I hate to bug life coaches, but you know, if that's, what's available to you, right? Like somebody not quite as licensed, but somebody that's able to help you kind of, you know, maybe more accessible. Um, but yeah, counselor, um, I mean, your doctor, depending on their familiarity, um, or a prescriber or psychiatrist, right. But I know we've talked about medications before and how they're a tool, right. It's like, it's like a booster, right. If like, you can't leave the house because, without having a panic attack, right. I'm not going to be able to tell you, well, Hey, just don't have a panic attack. There's nothing to worry about. Right. Like that's calm down has never calmed anybody down. Right. And so right. like with medications, um, there are a lot of medications that can be helpful to get you to a baseline. Right. We've talked about how mental health and different mental health symptoms, um, actually mean that your brain is not functioning at the level it should be right. There are deficiencies in, in our brains that are, are not allowing us to function at full capacity. Um, and so the medications get us to that baseline, right? So I can tell you coping skills all day. I can talk to you all day about like how to use these tools, but if, if you're not able to put them into practice, it's not going to do anything. Right. And so medications can be helpful for some people, right. To get them to a baseline to say, okay, I can get up and go to therapy. I can practice these skills. I can recognize this works. This doesn't. Um, and some people stay on them for longer. Some people only are on them for a few months, whatever it looks like. Um, but that can be a big tool, right. To, to find some mental health support, whether it's through your school, whether it's an agency, private practice, your doctor, all those resources, um, that hopefully are available. And we have, some resources if you need them. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Ashley. Come back again. We'll, we'll do more mental health stuff. And if you want sort of a deeper dive, check out Under the Cross. It's a wonderful podcast that Higher Things is putting out. And uh, we're, we're touching on all sorts of fun stuff there too. Ashley, thanks so much. Thanks, Sasser.